Utopia on the red side defending, Ding on the blue side attacking. In the Utopia lineup, you see a player that is League 216. That's actually Shapanik playing his first game for Utopia this season. Yeah, Shapanik yeah, is going to be playing for them. No Muka. I hear some tears drop the floor after that one because Ryan might have him in his fancy team. Obviously, we have a lot of time here to talk about it, about the things that can happen. Ding is also super heavy, which is a good thing. The Type 4, arguably why you don't pick a Type 5 is because you can put a tier 10 there, you can put a mouse, you can put something else. The Type 4 has the same derp. I was going mean, to say, did they have the same gun? They have the same derp, I think, I believe so at least. Um, and the, the good thing is about it, yes, you're not going to penetrate anything because of 75 millimeter penetration, which arguably can only penetrate medium tanks such as Leopard or Light Tanks or Batshot on the side or the front even. But, you know, he can trade blow for blow with a heavy tank because, you know, he gives you 500, you give him 500 back with the derp and you, you pull back around the corner. We also see that it was very good for Oops digging out that A6, A7 position mm -hmm. for the I, where the IS-4 was, but you can see Shepanik's a little bit posted up further. We don't know, usually see that A7, A8 position coming out. Now, could this be a big factor in Utopia's play? Because you have to ask, I mean, how many, you know, rehearsals, how many practices has he always attended? He's, he's been on the bench the entire season, has never been rotated in once. Well, you know, some bench players actually train a lot with the team for players that are not available, so they're versatile Slay. in that regard. It could be like, you know, one day one player is not available here, the next day somebody else is not available, so he might have gotten a decent amount of practice time at least. Just thinking as well, Daki, normally the usual player that's rotated out is Maraca, so I guess he's not available either, because it would be strange to put in Shapanik over Maraca. Yeah, they, those are the things uh, we are not always aware of or sure about. The good yeah. thing about this, the uh, Borsik has the small gun, I think it's the 12.8. That is um, very good accuracy, penetration. I mean, that can actually shred through the mouse if he gets the correct angle. So he could be doing a ton towards this push of Ding because it is going to come over the rails. Ding making a push here down towards the base on the left-hand side here. You can see the overview nice and easy there going towards base one and Utopia are grouped up top of the map. Daki don't really seem prepared for this at all. I don't think they are, you know, they anticipate maybe a one-two line push, but they have the defense there ready. I mean, they have Papa Pavian, Dynamo, but nice, nice connection there on towards the side. Nice connection there onto the mouse. Dynamo taking the first damage here in the game. Now, just thinking, Daki, this is similar to what Oops did in a way that they pushed the one-two line, made it look like they're going for that base, then actually swept in on the other base. But the lineup for Ding doesn't really lend to that tactic here, does it? No, and the biggest surprise here from the lineup from Ding, actually, in my opinion, is the fact that Meritorious is playing the Type 4 Heavy and Kuritz is playing the AMX 50B. Kuritz usually our Tier 8 slash Tier 9 player, now on the Tier 10s. Oh, can you get a shot? That's a nice one if you can get a Breakneck. Yes, he Oh, can. he does! 4-5-5 five, five, five there from Breakneck. Very nicely done. Seems they're very aware of that position. Might be used. And Breakneck is going to be able to chip away the entire game, probably, on towards Dynamo. Top there would be a nice one. Actually, can get side. Nope. But there's damage going on to Vilke there in the middle. Daki, there's another player actually playing in the lineup who's not normally in the Utopia lineup here, Vilke. So it looks like Utopia are actually really struggling to have a full normal team here. Yeah, Rulezic is, uh, Rulezic is there. Uh, who's missing? Muka and Maraka would be the normal two other players there. And Shuku is also missing. But Meritorious is going to make a shield on the cow. Very surprised that he's doing that. And not Kurit. Mary positioning a little bit more forward than the tier 10. Well, the T10 will be pretty hold down behind him actually impossible to get the shots off there now Utopia starting to come back to be able to get the reset Dynamo doesn't need to have any shots Mertorius is taking a heck of a lot of damage here but well he's the blocker he's meant to take damage um, Hulknick can just sit happily behind him capping away here and Utopia are going to have to drive into the guns of Ding but look at this Daki look at Kreet's positioning here ready to catch someone driving over he should do a full clip on the side here to get a bit breakneck from the top this is an ideal situation from Ding because everywhere Utopia go they will lose HP and there's Kreet's actually getting the shots out already Pap Pawan finally gets the kill on Mertorius but well he has to get past the armor to get a shot into Hulknick as the cap still goes on we're down to 1 minute and 10 seconds now the rest of Utopia is scared to go past this area because you have um, breakneck up here on the hill, but then you have Kurit's down below him, Daki. And Breakneck, another nice connection, and he'll get more and more. I honestly don't think Utopia has a single chance in this round. With the cap going on, they will have to push in, and they're just going to keep taking damage all over the place. Breakneck on an absolute damage farm up here. So he's looking for more shots to get into the side armor here of the Utopia tanks as they move forward. But just look at the damage done here for Utopia. They've barely got any return fire here. Kreitz gets a kill now on Biku. We can see Shapanik actually being the next one just about to fall. He's in 145 health. Wilkie's taking damage. Rulazek's taking damage. And Ding are in 
complete control here, Deki. Yeah, I don't think Utopia was expecting the Type 4 block and it came out from Ding. And then, yes, Mouse is a greatly armored tank, but from the sides it's still cheese, you know, for these high caliber guns that are just shredding through it. You could see how much damage they were taking from Breakneck, from Koreed. And that's really good play here from Ding. They seem to realize the setup from uh, Utopia pretty well once they took that rail control and realized that Meritorious can go on the cap. Might even be their strategy from the beginning, but you know they could even fall back towards the other base if they felt like that. And it's just clean up at this point. Kreitz picking up his second count now as he gets the drop on Papa Pawin. Shocky's here trading with Vilke and Rulazek opposite him. Now, Alien's going to move up now as well into Cap Circle, start forcing out some play from Utopia. And well, this looks like definitely round one here to Ding and very nicely done. Extremely well done by them. I mean, Colossoid here has to shoot at the T10 turret. It's not that easy. He's taking damage. He's losing his teammates. They've only lost Meritorious. And look at the HP lost on the Ding side. Pretty much none whatsoever. That is absolutely crazy. Finishing this round potentially with over 11,000 HP on the board, possibly even over 12,000, depending on how this end to the battle goes. Colossoid now down to one shot. Dynamo down to one shot. Rulazek down to one shot. They're the only players left here, Utopia. This is comfortably ding on round one. And Utopia, well, looks like they're going to really um, regret not having a full strength team here. This could really work against them in the, the last weekend. Yeah, I mean, perhaps trying out some players, maybe. I'm not sure what's going on there, but Ding's strategy, very, very on point. We could see the result of what happened. They were defending very back at the railway station, saying, OK, if they come onto the cap, we can reset them. Not counting out, not counting in the Type 4 block that was coming from Ding. And when that T10 got behind the wreck, there's no map control for Utopia to be found because they have those slow tanks, which cannot take any part of the map. Those mouses, IS-4, even the Kranwagen is not. Yes, it has a nice top speed, but it takes a long time to get there. Uh, so that was not that great for them. And they were forced into the crossfire of Ding, and then that's pretty much it. We very rarely see a team win with 10k HP left on Himmelsdorf. Yeah, another thing that I found quite interesting was that Breakneck was doing all his sniping in a 1-1-3. So a tank, not exactly known for its long-range accuracy, but what he had to shoot at was so big that he's never going to miss those yeah, shots. Yeah, he, he has those nice heat shots though that came in time and time again. Yeah, but I mean the one through the window and the one one three. That was, you know. Yeah, he luck. was lucky he went through the window and not to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> I wanted to follow up with the next line of the song, and I can't do that because it's really not PG. Um, so yeah, Ding taking this round one to zero. Do you think this could? I mean. I'll be honest, seeing that Utopia don't have their full strength lineup, I'm thinking this looks like potentially 5-1-5-0 territory. I wouldn't go that far yet. I mean, it's the first round here between these two, and arguably as well the fact that it is the Himmelsdorf now. It has changed a lot. I'd say the attacker has the advantage because they can they can afford to pick a much slower setup and get away with it than the mm -hmm. uh, defender. We saw what happened here. And, you know, I, honestly, I think the attacker will have starting to get the advantage because as... Uh, as the defender, you kind of still need to have some map control, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Top six players all coming in there from Ding. I mean, they were control for the entire match there. Breakneck actually managing to do 4,200 from that elevated area. Positive doing 3.9, pretty much 4K. Hulknecht doing 2.7. Kuritz, 2.6. Yeah, so much HP on the board. Kuritz, well done that. from his position as well. But Breakneck, yes, 4.3. Uh, previous times, we would be freaking out over that amount yes. of damage. But now it's like... Well, it's nice. Okay. It's, nice, it's yeah. nice. It's nice. It's not five. <laughs> it's, it's good, but we've already seen over 7K in the Russian league. That's insane. Uh, so, you know, the, the good, great performances now are like five to 7K. Good performances to great performances, four to 5K, I'd say. And in this kind of match, anything around 2K above is like a normal performance. Okay, um, yeah, interesting. I mean, with a lot of HP on the board, as teams can do a lot Somebody of damage. Somebody has to do the damage. Yeah, someone has know. to do a lot of damage for it. And we've seen, I believe it was Milos one round doing an absolute truck ton of damage on Ghost Town. Yeah, if, round he didn't, gets, if he didn't bounce, uh, gets if, eliminated. if he didn't bounce, uh, you know, meritorious uh, underplate, like uh, yeah, five or six times. Four, four shots into underplate. Uh, I bounce. just loved how he went like, uh, guys, did you know that the mouse <laughs> has like 250 millimeters on the bottom side? Yes, we're like, Milos, we're like, we yeah, Milos, we're all watching. <laughs> Everyone saw your shots. We wanted to make a specific point about it. Now, going into round two, teams are obviously going to swap ends. Now we're going to see Ding on the defense, Utopia on the attack. Mouse bed? Seven. Uh, eight. Eight. I'm not shaking hands. And I already said last week, I'm not going to do any bow tie bets this weekend. If there is any bow tie bets, it needs to come. First match, you and Mojo. First match, you and Mojo. Need to make a bet. And you we need to try and get Mojo to wear a bow tie. No, Mojo is not going to make the bet. You know, he's afraid of losing True. the fear. 
he's like Actually, he's like okay with taking a bet against Ryan because you know arguably Ryan is not going to make the most. Here's the thing: if we can get if time. we can get close-up camera of me for just a second, because I know Mojo's at home watching this. Mojo, did you remember to make your fantasy team pick? Because when me and Daki checked, you hadn't done it yet, mate. <laughs> just want to tell you that I, now that they're locked in, Mojo. <laughs> I sent him a message. Did though. you? I, I don't know if he did it because he didn't respond. Didn't respond. He probably did. He probably taken a nap. <laughs> <laughs> probably asleep. That's a fair point. Yeah. Now Daki is a lineup spot round two, and we have seven once again. But oh, there's a newbie here in the lineup. It's a pretender. Hmm. This VK. It's the fat tiger. How, how do we call it? VK 100. That. I think just the VK because we're never going to get another VK used. Uh, maybe the the, 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 the baby mouse. Let's just call it the VK 100. A baby mouse or fat tiger? Uh, that, that's not nice towards tigers. Oh, that's a baby mouse then. It's it's not. Mm. It's not the the mouse. Tier is, nine, the mouse is it's less the talked eight. about distant cousin. Mm. <laughs> that is a very long name. That so is, that is the tier nine, is it not? No, it's the tier eight. What's the tier nine then? Before the tier, the mouse? tier nine is the motion. Motion. Ah, yeah. This is, the, this is the tier eight. This is a very big tank. It can be used, uh, possibly to make a shield for the IS four somewhere. Because yes, it has a good gun, but armor wise against these tier tens is going to struggle. Uh, in a t in tier eight games, it's a monster because a lot of tier eights will. Uh, struggle to pen you anywhere. Yeah. Uh, but in these kind of matches, I think he's going to be used as a shield for somebody. Yep, it's got that middle place turret, so it can get used to block areas to the cap circle and stuff. Now, Utopia, once again, red side, they're attacking now, and Dinger on the blue side defending. Looking at the viewpoint here of Utopia as they start their march slowly across the battlefield. And look at this deck, actually. Dinger already taken, well, you can't see it now, but Dinger taking some blind shots already down the bottom of the rails. They're you know, just destroying some, uh, yeah. some fences. Want to see where this VK ends. Obviously, Utopia have the Type 4s. They can shield somewhere as well if they want to. Now, we were actually saying it can get used for blocking on caps and stuff like this, but I just realized it's on the defensive team, not the attacking team. Yes, but you can still block something as defender. Okay. You can block a side, like he can shield Meritorious' side or his front, wherever he... We've seen it in, in past uh, formats as well, where you know the Japanese tanks were used to shield the side of the IS-4. I think it was the Oni. Uh, Penta used to do that uh, to shield. Koritz can also block off a part of the cap circle. You can go sit in A7, and that will block off that part of the cap as well. The interesting thing for me here is that Mertorius is an IS-4, and is he going to go back to his well, his his personalized space here on Himmelsdorf at um, A5, where he or A6, sorry, where he just normally always dies. What a surprise! They are using him indeed as his shield on A7. Meritorious will be able to control the hill from there, and I think he can also. He's now watching the five lines, so they don't need to spot it in A5. He can, you know, this is good for him because the cap is really blocked off stops, as well. Stop someone doing any cap cheese. Yes, well but it area. also gives them a shield to, if they push the seven eight line. He can just sit behind Koritz and not get splashed to that, like we saw Oops do. I think mm -hmm. against was it against the Suba, um, so that won't work out for them. This is good. It's innovation from Ding, which is something we haven't seen from Ding for a very long time. They were always using stale tactics or old tactics, but I wouldn't... Oh, okay, stale is perhaps the wrong way to use it, but they're using old tactics and just relying on, on doing those tactics perfectly. And after a while, that kind of worked against them as teams were able to get a read on what they were doing. I still made it work, though, most of the time. So when it mattered, it worked. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they start falling into standard tactics here as well. You can see Shokish with the binoculars is going to spot out Bihu. Uh, obviously, a TD with binoculars, very good view range. Not going to put an exact number onto it because, you know. Because you know what chat's like. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Let's just say it's a lot. Hey, chat. <laughs> now, if you are Utopia, Daki, what's your plan here? What's your tactics? Are you going to break down Ding? I think they might try something similar. We're getting the uh, Type 4 onto the cap because if they can do this, then, you know, if the Type 4 gets into the cap at one point, they can do something similar to what uh, was used against them. That's some HE there from yeah. Colossoid onto Hulk, Nick. Uh, but GG. yeah, if the Type 4 can get onto the cap at one point, you can put a batch out behind him. Uh, batch out is very low, he won't get splashed. That will work out. The issue is going to be can the uh, Type 4 make it to the cap because the E3 will get two shots on towards him before he gets there. That's 1500 Alpha. And then, you know, there's a alien there as well. There's positive there. So the, the issue will be getting that tank on the cap. Yeah, it's going to be a, a hard break for here. I mean, the the top cap base two is very well defended. 
base one they have a bit of a run in to get to it but base two is going to be a hell of a fight trying to get over into that area i would not like to try and work out how to do that as we see dynamo actually pushing up here on the one line trying to get a bit of movement towards the base a bit of vision hognick has spotted in that area and this is shapanik here just taking pot shots into positive's mouse if he can hit the front of the third you know if he can hit that frontal third he probably will go through he has to just be careful because he has heat ammunition loaded he has only 10 shots remaining of it, so he doesn't want to waste his clip at this point because... Positive's teasing him. He, the thing is, at this point, when you have 10 shots in a bad shot, in this situation of the game, you use one heat shot, okay, you got to reload, then you have five, and then you cannot reload another heat clip unless you want to play with four shots. So he has to make sure if he uses this clip, he uses it wisely. Hmm. A slow-paced round so far, Dekki. It looks like... Um the, oh, Papa Pawan's going to go for a block to let Bihu come alongside of him. This could be dangerous if they track Papa Pawan, he's going to get stuck there. Defensive fire coming out from the tanks of Utopia. I'm not sure he's going to make it. He's going to take one more and then Shockish and Elian might be enough to kill him. Moving up into the area. He has got a cross, but he's taking a truck down damage. He dies on the cap circle. Bihu can get behind him. It looks like he has a safe angle there, Daki. It's not ideal, I think, for what they wanted to do, but it will work for now. The thing is, though, if Elian can get into that B1, C1 position at the barrels where he can push towards where we saw Colossal died in the last round, then he will be able to get those resets with Splash. So I don't think they wanted to get the wreck just there. I think they wanted to get him further. And here's the thing. Breakneck's just moved up and he's not spotted in doing so, so he knows that nobody has any coverage fire from the other side of the map. The only person that could be doing that was the Batcha, which they know where Shepanik is. I just want to see now, because Utopia is down a lot of HP and they're not trading so great either. Ilion is here in that position. He will push towards the barrels at one point. I, I think Utopia needs to do more than this because I don't think it's going to be enough because Ilion is now going to start making his approach while Break and Meritorious push down the three line. And Utopia needs to do a ton of damage right here. Break and Meritorious moving up now to get crossfire shots onto Biku as Elian moves up as well, distracting fire so that Utopia have multiple targets to shoot at, at the moment. Now Positive and Breaknik have taken a bit of damage. Hulknik actually got a broken engine there, fixed it immediately. But now look at this, three tanks coming around. They're going to have angles into Biku, but Breaknik actually taking quite a lot of damage here for this Daki. Yeah, he does, and Biku's now shooting as well because he knows he should get reset at one point. Somebody will reset him. He actually went off the cap, and now Utopia needs to win the fight. They've done the damage on the crossing. Now they need to be able to close it. And Biku getting two shots out. Now Breakneck has shots onto the rear of him. Hulknik's just going to bully him out of that position. Now Kozoid could get shot into one of these three tanks in the middle here, as Vilki and Dynamo are trying to get shots into um, Hulknik here on the cap circle. Biku has one more shot, but now he's dead because the three tanks have an angle on him. They're just going to pummel shots into him. He goes down. It's actually Hulknik picking up the kill, but look at this. Shapanik then gets the kill on Mertorius. Kareets is taking a lot of damage in the middle, Daki. And while Utopia are still in this, they're actually ahead here. Oh, not actually. That's roughly neck and neck for hit points, but I mean, Ding have the extra gun right now. And just uh, all the pressure here is on Shapanik right now. He needs to make great use of his clips. I don't think he should be going for Kuritz here. He trades already a shot there. I think he should be flanking around, perhaps going down the eight line or such, because driving into Kuritz, Kuritz will be covered by positive at all times. Dynamo getting the kill on Hulknik, who was left out on the one two line on his own, but Elian and Shokish are pushing up the rails as well, and Vilki and Dynamo are giving them a hell of a fight. Kreese takes another bit of damage here, as does Rulezek taking a bit of damage. And this fight in the courtyard, Daki, is going in Utopia's favour. They just need to hold these guys off and then try and focus on the guys coming down the rails, because once they get into the fight, this could be very different. Yeah, Utopia is winning the fight so far. Elian and Shokish really need to make their, uh, you know, their, their tanks count. Shokish, that's a big bounce. Huge bounce there. Huge mistake potentially there by Shokish, as these two tanks can now actually take their advantage. Can they both get their shots into Shokish? Wheel key, how much damage can you do here? Elaine's going to get a shot into him. Shokish may get a shot into him. They might actually have enough to kill him here, Daki. They do. So now it's down to Dynamo now, shooting into Shokish. Elaine and Shokish should be able to finish him off as well. And they're going to win this fight here on the rails, Daki. But in the meantime, Shapanik is clearing up in the courtyard. Positive is weathering shots like a beast, but this is definitely still not over. It's going to be right down to wire between this team here. Yeah, like I said, the bad shot of Shapanik is the difference maker here. I think that was a non-connection, -connect but he has one more. He needs to clean up positive here. He does, and this should bring the fight back towards the favor of Utopia because Dynamo and Rulezi can just hold here. Shapanik can just make the flanks and shoot him in the side. He doesn't have enough time to cap by himself anymore, but all he has to do is come in and clean up both these tanks. He has the HP for it. He just needs one of the team of his teammates to tank a shot for him. 
Dynamo and Alien Trading are short there. Dynamo actually came worse off for that. Didn't connect the first one, feeling connected the second one. Maybe looking at the viewpoint of Realistic, trying to get an angle onto Alien. We can see on the mini map that um, Shapanik is coming back into this fight. Realistic actually misses his shot, and Alien gets one back. Dynamo's now going to try and get a shot onto Alien. As Shapanik's going to run around, he's going to take a shot from the T uh, E3 here, run around the side of him. This should be an easy kill for him. Yep, he does. Alien's the only one left to go. How many shots does he have? Two more. This should be it. Actually, he missed the first one. I don't attract him from the He missed damage. the second one oh. as well. Come on, laddie. They should still have it, though. It's okay. Right. They should still Alien have it. Alien might get him as he tries. Oh, he's just trying to stop in front of Alien to bait out the shot. I mean, Alien could technically win this, though. <laughs> technically. <No. laughs> Dynamo gets the kill, and there we have it. 1-1. One, one. So a great fight there from Utopia, and very nicely um, done to come back into that round. Really, really nicely yeah, They done. needed to do the damage on the cross thing. They did. The Papa Pavin's wreck was not in the ideal position for them. They made it work, though. Bihu from that cap, the bad shot, did a few shots as well. I think three, maybe four, if he was lucky. But, uh, yeah, they did the damage when they were crossing, and Shokish and Elian, they were the difference maker. I think if Shokish perhaps does not bounce that shot, the fight would be different. Actually, it would be very different. Uh, yeah, it would rephrase be Rephrase that because quicker. Dinamo actually got around the corner. If Shokish gets Dinamo, gets the 750 Alpha in towards the mouse, Dinamo would not make it out, so they would kill both that Type 4 and the mouse, and then it would be the Bachar and a one-shot mouse at that point, Rulezic, because uh, he took a shot from Elian. Then, yeah, actually, they could have won that if uh, Shokish penetrated a shot. Yeah, definitely. Nice, Shokish. Nice, nice. Shokish. Nice. Nice, Snake. Nice. Whoa. Whoa. What? what? I didn't say that. What? Shockish. Let's go to stats. stats. <laughs> <laughs> Ilian coming in top damage here, but then the next three players coming in here for Utopia with Shapanik actually coming in second place there, Daki. A very, very nice performance from Shapanik. He is on that bad Eight shot. Kills. Exactly, that's what I'm going to say as well. 4.2k damage on a bad shot, which means he did clip after clip after clip pretty much Scary. because we saw him do some non connections as well. So he did a lot of clips. He took five kills as well. Five. That is crucial. Yeah. Okay, that's down to seventh place, and uh, damage done seventh place is still 2.9. Mm. It's crazy from how things It's a be. nice spread here between both these teams, though. Uh, on the first page, a lot of players trying to uh, bring the round well, back for their teams. A lot of people coming into this would have favoured Ding because, well, Ding is Ding. They've been really good. But here's the thing. Ding against Utopia. The first time they played each other, Utopia beat Ding 5-3. The second time they played each other, Ding only won in a tiebreaker. So this is probably one of Ding's hardest teams to play against this season by far. Yeah. But each there actually doing not that much in the tier 8. I felt like he should have connected at least one or two shots, especially when the bad shot pushed him. Should have connected one massive connection in towards him. Uh, yes, he was going to be used as a block, but yes, he should have got at least one shot out. Yeah, I mean, him, Papa Powen as well, zero damage. Papa Powen was going in there to, to block, but I mean, you would expect a bit more from Kreitz than that. Yeah. Merry as well, only 904. I mean, Merry and it's hard to make an IS4 and Himmelsdorf. It's hard to make an IS4 work on this map, though, because it's also pretty slow. Yeah. Uh, Maus really doesn't struggle with the IS4 whatsoever, so that was a hard tank to play because of the strategy Utopia used. Maus bent seven. Seven, yep. Now I'm interested to see what we're going to get on Runeberg here for lineups, Daki. Oh. Um, wow. Um, Ding going like heavy, but then also really flexible as well. They have a little bit of both. They can do uh, map control, but they can also do the TV. This is an A-line strat, though. This 100% has to be an A-line strat. Both the TVPs trying to kill anybody that's going to cross, which there is nobody from Utopia that's available. 5100 looks like it's going to be flipped and then an I7 behind it. Honestly, it looks like an A-line strategy to yep. me. Looks um, like a base. Yeah, possibly. Utopia will have to see how the Type 5 works against the MX-5100. Can he splash through the wreck? He might be able to do. Can he splash above the wreck on the wall and reset? Perhaps, because it is like an RT gun in essence. So he has splash, uh, splash range and he might actually be able to do it. Yep, well, let's find out if that's going to happen or not. It's Utopia Ding, it's 1 1 all squared. We're now going to map two, it's Runeberg. Runeberg, a mixed type map. The defending team starts the battle on the green, and the attacking team starts at the centre square of the town. Bases are located quite far from each other. Both bases are better controlled from the village when playing a heavy setup. It's better to attack the first base through the top direction with the help of several well armoured heavy tanks. For the attack on the second base, it's better to use a more mobile setup and either play through the centre or split forces. In general, the map is not easy to play on. Teams often use blind shots and risky 
the shifting of the forces from one flank to another. Okay, Daki, we have Utopia on the red side, they're defending, Ding, blue side are attacking. And look at this from Ding, Daki, it's exactly as you predicted, they're making a move up to base number one, and also looks, Daki, like Utopia are expecting this, and they're setting out all their tanks over there immediately already, ready to receive it. Yep, they are, well, no, they're doing their kind of usual split here. I think they're leaving both WZs in the uh, A7 position, where they had them as well against Kazna crew, if you remember. Uh, Kazna crew tried to rotate through the A line, got shut down. The TVPs here are just waiting. If anybody would make a crossing, we see it's not going to happen. Uh, there's no lights available to Utopia, and their 113, which is the other tank that could risk to do this, is not going for it either. Nice from Papa Powen here. He's going to push himself all the way up onto this corner and say, anything you try and do, I'm going to derp you straight away before you try it. So Chris is now going to back off. We're going to see him drive the safe route to take no damage, and then we can see how the MX-5100 get, gets, gets flipped. For anybody that hasn't seen it yet, it is interesting. Shockish Shockish. got spotted and got shot at there. 526. It looked it was potentially... Where did that come from? Where is he on Papa the map? Pavian. Papa Pavian would have done it all the way down the road. Yep. Kreitz is um, wiggling and a jiggling. Yeah, you just get somebody to push him at one point. Bro, come help. Shockish. Can you do it? Nice, Shockish. Nice. Well done, Shockish. Great play. Top performance. But now they're going to, once the uh, 5100 gets in position, we'll be able to see how it gets flipped. And then it's going to be a long, long round with the 5100 getting pushed onto the cap slowly, but surely, by Papa the... Papa uh, now taking a lot of damage. Actually positive, he's just lost his gunner now, Daki. It's annoying on the E3. He has probably no medkit available on that one either. <laughs> struggling to flip so, it. So, uh, somebody, Shokish will help him with he's flipping. No, he's no professional like Yuzni. Yuzni mm, needed no help to flip. Nobody can flip tanks like Yuzni flips tanks. Like Gaston. He's like, he's like the WGL version of Gaston. Mm, mm, I feel you. Gaston. Oh, man. I'm going to go watch the new one. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It seems very strange that you've got, a, and we're talking about Beauty and the Beast here to go totally off topic, ladies and gentlemen. It seems very strange you have an English um, accented actress and everything's meant to be like feudal France. Hmm. And uh, Shockish just failed at flipping Kareet Stacky. <laughs> nice, Shockish. Nice. Okay, he's done it now. Shockish, what are you doing, mate? You just flipped your team, mate. This is crazy. Oh, okay. So, Daki, it looks like you've got your crayons ready. Yeah, so obviously we can see 5100 will get flipped over here. Then they will push him down here to get onto the cap circle over here. What will make this is that these tanks here and these tanks arguably won't have resets available to them. What we have to see is if the Type 5 can possibly hit this, though. If he can reset over here. Other than that, we can just see Ding is just going to hold the, hold the angles. They have like E3 here, which is currently invisible, which is all cool. But all they're going to do is make sure that if anybody crosses through this little X over here, they're going to get wrecked for doing so. That's all they have to do because holding this is very easy, especially because of the slow lineup coming out from Utopia. What if you push the Type 5 Heavy or the mouse across and just push it over to where Base 1 is? You mean like this? Yeah. Impossible because of the double TVP and the E3 but, and the mouse. This there's, there's only one TVP there. Uh, yes, but there's a mouse and there's an E3 as well. So okay. they they will provide crossfire. The TVPs will track anybody. If they make up, they'll be low HP. And don't forget, there will be an I7 on the cap to fight. Okay. Um, well, this is very slow. Shockish um, struggling, actually. He's stuck on the rubble. Because he light. Okay. Ну, они не с этой стороны вообще не светятся. Да, ему против этого. Ну, это не имеет Ну, по проезду они, короче, ну, рано засветят. Две секунды у него когда дольше становится. Мэри, хорошо взять хп, бля. Как ты получил? А двух вазиков между домами. Хера ты, блядь, Тим Спик врубили. Ни хрена себе. Здрасте. Стойся, просто башню доверни. 
надо быстрее. Да не надо быстрее. Мне нужно осторожно. Давай, теперь. Да, ну мне только с 13 может быть. Мы не можем? Не. Не, не. Ты ничего не можешь, ты стоишь, ничего не делаешь. После даже, да, что-то с ним поедут? Да, у меня без намочечка. Как с 13 только адресуется, поеду. Кто КД? Невозых. Я свечу, yes. короче, у них, у них прям кто-то агрессивно стоит, светит в кустах вот тут вот. Я хз, кто это может. Я на его мог, в обход просто. пойду, они явно будут там играть. Вроде нету щели, да? Или mm -hmm. есть щель? Странство, когда mm, есть, есть, надо чуть вперед толкнуть его. Да и мне вообще очень мало. Не, морду, морду толкни мне вперед чуть-чуть, морду им. Да все уже язык. Может на меня на этой третьем ближе подкатить сюда, типа. Ну главное, что ты не умер, блин, и дал шот, смотри сам. Все, бери базу. Вообще всего один раз надо забить. Ну да, я к этому. Ну они здесь поедут, позже. Ты хочешь сюда? Я Может сейчас подпушить? Рано, рано, рано. Ну когда будет просто это 30, да, 30-40 Но у них yeah. танка выключена. Давай, Он Эллин, с этим сбил. едешь сразу. Он сбил. Mm, у нас неправильно сотка стоит. Не... Она жопой не в ту сторону стоит. Прикольно. Да. Ты не берешь просто О, вызов. На, на жопу нет сторону стоит. Прикольно, псаловочек. Вкатывайте эти мауса тоже козу. Вроде выжай, да. Ну, Илен нужно ко мне закатить в захват. Я да, закатывай. Е3. Илен, к кому? Е3, дальше не едь, тут, 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 там тебе цель. You need to do damage, Ilian, on those guys. Just kill those guys on the corner. Try to kill the type. Ни хера себе, у него три мало, три танка. Просто подкатывай перед блочит их тайпу. Вкатывайте его сюда, вот, от этого добивайте все, и потом есть мёрки. Меня из круга мол. не выезжайте, из круга не выезжайте. Я, я, щит не from those guys. Нам это окей? И тоже здесь захват ходит, здесь захват. Да в курс, из круга стреляйте по ним, и все, Все, заедете в круг. Рулейте, как, блядь, тайпу бейте. Бейте нам. Заберу леса. А, не пробил. Они странно у меня. Вы за их убиваете? Вы за их добейте? Катки! Вы за их добейте! 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 Тайпа убей! Тайп сейчас собьет! Сейчас тайп собьет! Убейте тайпа! Алло! Тайпа! Я КЗ! Ты на шоке еще не мог сбить что ли? Не убить? Ой, сложно. Маус! And they almost had it, Daki. Almost had it, but just not good enough, unfortunately. Uh, almost. Uh, uh, arguably, Utopia was in control the entire time when they saw Ding put even more tanks on the cap. They were like, well, let's push in. We have 6,000 more HP. We can afford to uh, to trade some. Let's put it like that. And they did exactly that. Cheeky little Shepanic running in there, getting the reset, surviving till the very end on 21 health. He just ran through the entire team, ran around the back, got the reset, and then just carried on behind the building. Yeah, we argued that the strategy was not going to work because of the Type 5. Um, I think it didn't work because of the Type 5, exactly I think, that. I think also it's debatable about how much um, wreckage you actually have. I mean, I think the tracks you can still shoot through, and we saw tracks actually... Tracks count when they destroy it. Shockish at one counts. point actually took a, a penetration that yeah, you spotted as well. I think it was a penetration at one point from the miles, 571. 
when a shot goes into the track from type 5, I don't think it's going to do 571. So there was that. The strategy from Ding, I don't think it works that well against these big derp guns, which are pretty much artillery pieces. Yeah. And also, um, it's very readable as well. Like, like from the very if they, start, if they could flip to like a it. really big tank, like the tier eight one, the tier yeah. eight, the tier eight VK, the also of A, I think even or the VK they used on Himmelsdorf, if they could flip that and get that onto the cap, then I think that would possibly have enough armor plates. Uh, well, it's even even just as it is, just on its side, it would without having to flip it. It's a tall tank, middle turret as well. Mm, it's not big enough, I think. Excuse me. Let's have a look at the damage there, Dake, and see where it all came from. There was a lot of damage to go across the board. Positive, actually, was the one highest in the E3, but then Vilke in the WZ, uh, 3.8, right behind him. Yeah, Positive did what he could in that E3, but, you know, I think the rest of his teammates are going to be far, far, far below on that uh, second page. You could he hear Kareeds there questioning how Mary lost so much HP in the beginning mm -hmm. in a, yeah, <laughs> a nice fashion. Um... It's a big difference there from the top two to then the next one. It's a good thousand, thousand damage going from Vilke down to Breakneck. Vilke being one of the newer players coming in here who's barely played for Utopia all season. It looks Daki more than likely that um, Utopia actually deliberately rotating players here. Yeah, perhaps testing or perhaps letting them players play a little bit because their rankings can't be much affected anyways. So, uh, then they can still end sixth. I think Oops can still... Oh, they're safe. Uh, Utopia are definitely safe because Gunrunners are on 11th and Utopia are on 19th. So Gunners can only get a maximum of, of seven points, and that means Gunners would have to beat Gohard and Ding, which is, to be honest, yeah, not going to happen. happen. Yeah, like we said, Hoknake, Shrok is there, not doing that well. Uh, yeah, this strategy against the uh, Japanese tanks, I think you can... Like, uh Throw that one in the bin. Yep, it's done and dusted. Now it's going to be round two, so now Utopia are going to go on the attack. Ding are going to go on the defense, and let's see what Utopia have in the bag, Zaki. See if they have anything special here for Ding, or is it going to be fairly standard tactics? And well, <laughs> Utopia, um, uh, holy sh Actually, Daki, this might be something special. Um, this might be an AMX box. They won't make an AMX box. It doesn't work. Tanks are pushable. No matter how many of them, they are pushable. Um, uh, light, if you make a choo-choo train of six tanks, and push one wreckage, that wreckage will move. Okay. Um, it just works like that. Uh, it's not possible to make a box and make it effective enough to be unpushable, I think. Uh, very much unlikely. But they might do an A-line cap as well. I mean... Just, just block? The, the potential is there for them to drive one of the mouses onto the cap, put an AMX 1390 behind it and shield him that way, trying to do the damage with the other five mouses. But they can also push towards the city and fight. The little city, though, is not going to be such a great fight for them unless they can get an isolation on the tanks from Ding because of the fact that Ding will be able to take the zero line. They have that T-49, they have that bad shot. So I think this is going to be another, not maybe A-line cap, but it's going to be a cap on the number one base with a mouse shielding a 1390. If it's on the C5 corner, or on the A4 corner, well, that's, I think, the only thing we have to find out. Well, let's find out. All the tanks from Utopia are turning up to go north here, Daki. Utopia, red side attacking, Ding, blue side defending. And, well, the Utopia lineup unchanged from previous um, lineups as well. So, again, we still have Shapanik here, and we still have um, Vilki playing in the lineup. Yeah. Um, it's going to take a while before they get on towards the cap, like we explained in the last round already. Mouse will get on their shield and then they're going to try and cover or are they going to push with six mouses onto the cap? I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> I'd be very, very intrigued if they push six mouses onto the cap. I somehow do not believe it because Bihu is back, so there could be five mouses on the cap at <laughs> best. It will be interesting. March of the mouse here. Oh, Kurit, he's dead, I think. No? Kurit. Well, one hit, one miss. He gets across into that area. He should have died for that. Should have died. Kreet should have died for our he crossings. He shouldn't drive like that either. Yeah. Look at this already, actually. Uh, Papa Powen taking 570 there in the face. Um, so I wasn't from Shockish, but it was whoever was beside Shockish. It could be from Shockish as well. 570 is a low roll for the gun. Wow, okay. I think it's just within range as well, 570. I don't know what's the bottom line for the E4. I think 570 is... I think, I think they're going to use Papa Powen taking a pummel in here as he's driving forward. Dak, he's onto half health. I think much he's going to be the block. He's going to probably be the block. He's going to be the main block. And is it going to be a full box in or just a double box in? Uh, they're going to Papa Powen is going to block a mouse and two. He's going to block for the two mouses in the 1390. Okay, so 
this is they have to be careful because they can damage um Shapanic here in the AMX thirteen ninety. It looks like they want to do some kind of three man block. Kareet's coming in there. Uh one ten damage. Then um Vilki's taking a lot of damage here. So he's got a broken engine, he's got a dead gunner as well, Daki. Let's actually listen into now the team speak of Utopia and see how they're gonna see with this one. Позитив едет с радиаткой. Well, Daki, much like Ding's cap tactic here, this didn't work either. I'd say this one was even worse, uh, yes. <laughs> arguably. Um, At least the other one uh, lasted a bit longer. And yeah. even taking a single tank down here for Ding. I'm not sure what to say about this one. This was not good. Nicht gut. In der Motor kaputt. Motor kaputten. Bihu, only player left on his team as he's taking shots from everywhere here. On the breakneck, actually has to swing all the way. He's on a reload as he can't shoot because he's got a broken turret. We have Torius picking up the final kill, and there we have it, Daki. 2-2. Two, two. two maps down, and this is kind of what we were expecting from these yeah, teams, to be honest. I mean, you said beforehand we expect high high chance of two tiebreakers here for the two matches this season. Yeah, evening. I thought it's going to be close ones than it is. At least the rounds are semi quick, but. Uh, yeah, that A-line, that, that's not an A-line cap, it's just a cap strategy it's not even on the a cap rush. It's, it's, it's the thing about the mouse, like when the mouse is side scraping and he's able to hide the front face of his turret, like the frontal armor away, then the mouse becomes effective. Now, if the mouse is not being able to hide that front face, he can still get penetrated. Even if it's on an angle, yes, they will struggle with it. Yes, not everything will go through, but as long as they can see the front turret and hit it, the, the shots are going to go through and we could see that happened exactly to Vielke, he just got wrecked pretty much in his mouse and sacrificing a tier 10 for a cap strategy, unless you trade really well in the fight, you're not going to win it because you lose a full tier 10 for that, you have an Amex 3090 which is not going to do anything against the tanks from Ding, so yeah, and Shokish. Nice, Shokish. <laughs> nice, Shokish, nice. nice. Almost 6k damage there from 9 shots, Daki. That's quite a, that's quite a beast of damage there. E4 is a really good tank for uh, against mouses. We will see it more and more be used because armor-wise, not that great. I mean, the turret is not as strong as the E3. The hull is not that strong either. The the, the thing that it has is speed it's got over speed the E3. It's got, it's got the turret We're rotation, comparing yeah. it over the E3, of course. Like It doesn't have the armor of the E3, but it has a really good gun. And it has the fact that it has the uh, yeah good penetration and yeah. a rotatable turret. Yeah, um, breakneck really great damage as well. 4k damage. Then alien 3k positive 2.5 from the 113 and picking up two kills as well. Biku doing top damage for his team there. Powin, um, yeah, not so great. Then Shupanic, well, I mean he's in the Amex 1390. He at least got a couple of shots off there. Yeah. Um. Good for anyone in his fantasy team. I'll be amazed if anyone had him in his fantasy team. I think the only potential people that have him in the fantasy team is the Utopia players who knew that he was going to play, or him himself. It'd be even more amazing if he didn't put himself in his own fantasy team. Well, I have Colosoid. And I uh, can't remember who Bihu. I have. I have Bihu, Colosoid, and I think Muka was the third one. I have Colosoid, and I have Bihu. That's it. And I'm Muka has played remember. so much yet today. I'm going to backhand you live on stream, Daki. Try me. Then I'll maybe <laughs> give you the forehand as well. I'll give you an archie slap. Try me. <laughs> See how long you'll be casting for. Just one one weekend's all I need right now. <laughs> pacing myself. I'm pacing myself. 
Right, so now we're going to go into Ghost Town, Daki. Another heavy centric map, another city map, another brawl map. Seven mouse. Seven mouse again. You're just going to go seven mouse every time. Seven mouse. I'm going to gamble once the eight once again. Let's have a look and see who's going to be right. We're not going to handshake bet on it. Don't worry. Seven again. So is it? Just, I mean, okay. Daki, you've stolen Mojo's crystal ball. <laughs> Both of them. Um, he has two. He has one for home and one for the office. Okay, okay, sorry. I was getting, I was <laughs> getting mixed up about Yeah, <laughs> I'm always surprised by Mojo and his crystal balls, Daki, to be honest. Right. You never can quite predict when they're going to turn up, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, seven miles here. Utopia on the attack. We kind of know what's going to happen. Same for Ding. Yep, they're going to go and they're going to fight. So let's find out who's going to fight and who's going to win. It's round one here, map three. It's Ghost Town. Ghost Town. The first absolutely symmetrical map, made especially for seven versus seven games. The teams start the battle on opposite sides. There are numerous ways to attack here. One of the bases is located in the central square, the other one at the top of the city. The hardest battles are usually fought for the top base, and this calls for the use of heavy tanks. Sometimes the teams choose fast tanks for spotting and base capturing. And here we go on Ghost Town now. Utopia, red side attacking, Ding, blue side defending. Have the Facebook links at the top. Drop by, give them a hello. Don't troll the other teams, please. Be nice. Yeah, we know what's going to happen here pretty much for Utopia. They can put the double WZ onto the cap if they want to, uh, or they can go middle. They have chosen more of a northern approach, it seems like, but we have seen them play against Kazna crew and push very heavily through that D-line, they might be going for that all over again. Last time they did it, they had five mouses and two WZs, if I'm not wrong. This time they've chosen one more mobile tank, and it seems like they're at least in the beginning posturing up for a similar strategy for what they did against Kaznai crew. Wouldn't be surprised if these mouses and the 113 at one point push straight through the D-line, and the question will be here for Ding. Can the single shooters make their shots count? And can the T-57 make its shots count? WZ pull out at completely the wrong time as Alien and Mertorius and Shockish are ready to push back into them. But they do get two shots into Mertorius before they back off here. They've only taken one shot, two shots in return for that, Daki. And that was actually a fair trade, but Shockish and these three mouths are going to go right down the throats here. This is really good counterplay from Ding, but I think it's a little bit too slow. They wanted to catch the WZs off guard, but they have paid very heavily for it because Utopia was running the same strategy. But Utopia could still rotate around and come back towards the WZs and help him out. Shapanik's taking a lot of damage here on Utopia, but Ding has actually put a lot of damage onto Mertorius, which is not good. He's one of the blockers. He's there to absorb shots. But look at this. Breakneck's getting pushed back on the other side. Daki Biku and his mouse for Utopia has taken half damage now as well. And these teams have, have a bit of a pause at the moment, but it looks like they're going to go right back at it. Yeah, Breakneck already getting the first kill here. He's going to have to get out of there, though. Great rotational. He gets tracked, and I don't think he has another repair kit, so he could be going down here for Ding. Papa Powen got the shot on team, is going to get one more. No, it's actually Colzoid that comes around and gets the kill as Vilki takes a lot of damage driving around there as well. So tank for tank now, and Utopia actually has a slight HP advantage over Ding at the moment. Yeah, Utopia needs to group up and counter push because Hulknik from behind and a T-57 is going to make them pay. Because Biku, look how low he is. Hulknik and a T-57 Heavy is able to pick up Biku in his mouse, but now it looks like Ding are going to push all the way through here. They're going to try and get shots on... Uh, Dynamo and Rulisek, but I mean, Daki, this is a massive brawl at the moment. Yeah, but I think Ding is coming by far ahead of it because they're finding the isolations all over the map. Papa Pavin and Wilki are not in the fight right now, and Hoknik is about to come off reload again. Hoknik's going to get four shots out here. One more into Rulisek will kill him. Actually, turns the turret. No, he's going for the hull, Daki, here. Actually, go oh, he's going to go for a turret now. So, Shockish getting the kill there on Rulisek. Positive, continue to brawl with all these other mouses of Utopia. And this looks like it's going to be Dings. They have the HP advantage here, they have the armor advantage, and now they have the gun advantage as well. Yeah, this is Ding all the way. They've read Utopia's strategy pretty well. And now, positive. Shockish actually shielding, not working out. And now, Ding just has to close out these final kills. Papa Palman coming around to try and get a shot here into Shockish as Dynamo is actually blocking his teammate from being able to do damage. And Hulknik again off reload here is going to clip out T57 Heavy. I think that's going to be our top damage dealer here. Daki's got off at least three clips here into the tanks of Utopia. Papa Palman now the only player left for his team as Alien and Kreitz now are on cleanup duty. 
It's the thing what saved Kazna crew last time as well when Utopia played against this. They established Crossfire in the 57 from Nexus, was able to do a lot. And again, this was the question, this was the thing. Ding, their autoloader, Hulknik in this case, in the T57 with that heat ammunition, with that DPM, uh, needs to do the damage. I think he did, we'll see in the stats. But yeah, we, uh, I saw him do multiple clips of damage, so that was very well done from him there. And that's the difference maker here. I mean, there's, there's two things. I think Hulknik did fairly well. He should mm. have done fairly well, at least, in his T57. And then also the fact that things seem to read Utopia strategy. I mean, we saw it. We saw it last week. They also watched the matches, so they should also be able to read it. And they counteracted it. They expected them to be quick enough to catch those WZs, and they did. And Utopia was forced to rotate around, and Hulknik was there to catch them every single time. Okay, yeah, that's very... Good breakdown here, actually, of the match. It looks like the statistics, Decky, uh, we're going to have to wait a little while for them right now. Um, so let's talk about this going the other way now. Now, um, Ding have been able to get ahead here now of Utopia. Now, commonly in the first two maps, Utopia have came back. They've brought it back. Do you think Ding are going to be able to take the lead I now? Think this is two, a great two I still go. think it goes tiebreaker? I, I don't know. I mean, I think steps will be Ding's map. I think this will go 3-3, and then Ding might win out 5-3 to three on steps because Utopia, when we saw them play against Kasna crew, really didn't look good. Yeah. I mean, certainly it's been one of the hardest teams for Ding to defeat this season. Why do you think that's been? I mean, they've gave Ding like a hell of a fight each time. And like I say, last one was tiebreaker, and Utopia actually won the first one. So Utopia kind of has the advantage here, to be honest. They've taken more rounds from Ding. Kind of play both in a tactical sense as they play with standard tactics and they were able to counter Ding very well in the last two times they met each other. So I think it's that to blame. Yeah, Hooknick here, doing very well. 4.5 there, T57 heavy. Yep, five, 15 shots. So that's three clips, yeah? 15 shots? That's four, isn't it? Not five, so... I'm not going to do the math, Ryan, Daki, I'm sleeping. Two kills, very four, nice. Four shots, four shots. Elian, Elian Ra getting three Ryan, kills. Ryan, do the math with me. Daki, no, no I can't. Ryan. Uh, Daki, once I get past ten, I struggle because that's all the fingers okay, I've got in my hands. Okay, but then just remember. I can't take my socks shoes fingers. off on stream. I can't, Daki. I'm, I'm struggling. I've got six fingers in one hand that nobody knows about. three clips and three shots. Three clips, three shots? Fifteen. Three clips is twelve shots and then he did three more. So he did three clips and three shots. So yes. four clips in total. Yes, he did four clips, like I said at the start there. Very well done. <laughs> Nicely done there um, from from Hognick. <laughs> Come on, mate. It's taken me 35 years to learn English. Uh, like, I'm not going to try and learn maths as well at the same time. If it's past 10, I'm stuck. I need somebody else to help me count as well, and they have to move their fingers down each time. At least your Dublin 8 is under 10. It is, actually. No, it's slightly higher. I think it's 11. Uh, 11. There we go. <laughs> Everyone can crack that elevator joke now. Let's have a look at the lineups going into round two, Daki, and see how many mouse we're going to see. Is it going to be seven? Well, no, it's going to be five, but we do get two type four heavies as well. Yeah, I think after everybody saw Miloš, they're like, I want to play type four heavy as well. The good yeah, thing about it, on, a lot. the good thing about it is this on the defense is that it can trade well into the number one base, or blow for blow with a heavy tank like an I7 in there which uh, means that you don't need a tank like an Udes on A1 anymore because the Type 4 can do the same. Yes, he'll die at one point, but he'll make the heavy tank pretty low in the meantime. And he can also pen the bad shots. When you, when you said uh, he can do the same, I just had visions of a Type 4 doing the climb there. <laughs> it's the cameraman enjoying driving through here, Ghost Town. Very nicely done. It's like he's in a bat or something. As we zoom in to the lineup here of Ding, with their a lovely black and white camouflage. It looks so awesome on the mouse, doesn't it? Any of the team camouflages look really awesome on the mouse. It's because the mouse just looks awesome by itself. It's an awesome tank. Now, Utopia, red side defending, Ding, blue side attacking. To make things nice and easy for you, Utopia on the red side have the blue camouflage, and Ding on the blue side have the black and white camouflage. So Ding's going to spread out here in the beginning, covering all their bases. Uh, sending Kuritz towards the north to spot out Utopia. They're going to do the same. They have double bad shot. They can just hold in that one line. They can no counter push there with their two bad shots because they will get wrecked on that crossing. The only thing Utopia has to do here to begin with is set up the positions they need to hold the center cap because the type 4s can easily deal with the northern cap. So they just need to make sure if they push, they're ready to receive it. Look at this, Daki. Kuritz is actually making a move all the way up here. He's going to just stop where he is. It looks like it. He's not actually going further. Yeah, he's just spotting. 
Kreets, what do your elven eyes see? Nothing. Nothing, Daki, is the answer. It's going to be a slow round here again from Ding. I mean, you can just see the positions all across the map. You'll see when they make their move and the mouse will start gathering up on one spot of the map. Dynamo, the only tank spotted at the moment for Ding on the Utopia side. It's driving about in the T-57 Heavy. So far, they have no vision on anybody else, although just as I say that, Papa Powin and Shapanik get themselves spotted. And Biku as well, actually. Shot missed there from Hulknik. Well, How did that there. miss? I'm not sure. But all I saw was Breakneck taking one for uh, for Lado and losing his gun. Mm. He's going to have to use his repair kit at one point. It's very annoying on the bat shot if you have to use your repair kit on, on that. But you have to. Use it on the gun now just to get tracked later. Pretty much what no, he's he won't. On. He won't use it until he runs away because he can't risk getting tracked. Creek's just um, ducking and diving here, Daki, trying to get some vision. Papa Pow, when he knows he's back there now in Type 4 Heavy. Break, and they take another damage, Daki. He's tracked and he gets his um, radio damaged as well. Both shots look like they came out there from Biku. Yeah, Breakneck's not going to be happy about that one at all. He's now very low HP. speed. It puts him into a passive position for the rest of this round, pretty much. And now he needs to pick his engagements very well, because when you are this low in a bad shot, you know, you can't drive at anybody and be like, OK, I'll take the shot. Uh, An interesting thing as well is in return, Biku took no damage for it. So nice trade, nice start for Utopia here. And they go ahead. First blood to them, or first damage to them, and now they lead HP-wise on to Ding as well. Well, it does seem like Ding is going to group up and go for their northern play by their positions. So you can see they're probably going to try to block off the Type 4s from crossing to that B6 corner by pushing themselves. We're going to have to see if Utopia can set up the necessary crossfire to hold it off. Positive very far forward there on the end of what we always call Death Alley. It's an area where the teams normally fight. They're pushing right now. You can see the entire movement of Ding into this area as Shokish comes up behind him into that alleyway where so many teams die. Karitz and Mertorius are going to come around the BC line, Daki, as you predicted. Papa Powin is there. What can Papa Powin do? It looks like he's missed the shot already or he's on reloads and many can actually get quite far forward here and be able to clip out into him. Yeah, but now the push from Ding will have to come out because... Papa Pavin can trade very well with Meritorious. Meritorious will have to take the shot and then Hooknik will go past him. That's the plan here for Ding. But they're losing HP on other tanks though. Meritorious takes one in the face there as he goes around the corner from Wheelkey. He's clipping out into Papa Pavin as Hooknik's going to run around him here at the moment. Hooknik gets his shots. Kareet's desperate to get a shot in there as well. That's actually Hooknik gets the killing blow. So Utopia have lost Papa Pavin, able to do resets. Are they going to put someone on the cap now, Daki, from Ding? Then they should put Kuritz on there at the very, very least. And Ding is actually training very well here in this area. Much better than I expected. But Hooknik takes so much for running away, though. Hooknik getting focused there. See, Elaine has a damaged track. He's not moving at the moment. Shokish has a dead driver. Positive's got damaged fuel tanks. Mary has a dead commander. Dead vision port as well. So now damage is going on to Kuritz as well. Now, Utopia are taking damage on FC Dynamo and Vilki at the moment. But they're holding the lines. And actually, it seems to be Ding that are losing this trade right now. I think can still recover though because they are half two, three tanks out of the fight right now, which is Breakneck, Hooknek and Kurit. Breakneck will now start coming from behind and start putting shots here into Vilki's suit, into Rulezik as well, and that should be the difference maker for Ding though. Kozoid missing a shot there, but then Shokish missed one back as well. As Breakneck now picks up Vilki. Kozoid knows he has to turn around. Dynamo's turning around to him. Breakneck able to get some nice damage from this area. Puts one into BQ. Goes for Dynamo now as well. See positive coming forward to trade. Breakneck actually getting a kill on Dynamo. We're looking at the viewpoint now of Biku and Shapanik coming around him to jump onto Martorius. Shapanik's going to take a lot of damage for that, Daki. Um, Biku actually, no, Shapanik actually is the one who picks up the kill. He takes a lot of damage. However, though, he's dead now as Elian gets the kill on him. And Ding look in control, Daki. It's still six guns here to three, and this looks like to be Ding taking the lead here, four to two. Yeah, Ding should be taking the lead. They read Utopia's positions very well, and they counteracted them. Going for Papa Pavin was the first step, then backing off with their batches and coming from behind was the second. All this time, Meritori is also clipping from the side, and they just surrounded the tanks from Utopia and killed them slowly but surely. Rules like getting a kill there onto positive. Look at this, Biku clipping out into the remaining tanks of Ding, but then he goes down as Rules like gets another kill on Shokish, but then Breakneck picks up the final kill. Colzoid is the only person left, sorry. Not quite the final kill, and he's going to go down swinging as he does as much damage before he goes. He might get a shot or two more, but it's not going to be enough to save his team. 
Might have got some damage on towards Thelion, who's playing uh, Invisible Man right now. Yep, that's just uh, an issue we have with the um, Ops mod at the moment. Sadly, we can't really do anything about it, but we hope to get it fixed ASAP, as Hulkneck and Breakneck are just waiting to catch Kozoid in a crossfire here. They're just going to rush in, finish off this match quickly. Really nowhere to go, nothing to do. It's actually Kareets in the 251 picks up the kill there on Kozoid. Good stuff there from Ding going for that type 4 first, which we saw the position of Papa Pavian. Meritorious took both the shots from Vilki Suit and from uh, as Ryan took the shot from the desk. Uh, no, my knee just clicked. From from the type four, from both the type four, so that the bat shot and the RU could come around, finish him off. Then they backed off. The hook can take a lot of damage for the crossing. Yes, but the, he came from behind with breakneck, and that's really the difference maker. Utopia was torn between all sides. They had no real uh, consolidated front line against Ding. It was all over the map, everywhere. They were trying to fight, but Ding got the rotations off, got the shots from the side, from the back, from everywhere. They really wanted to. Uh, and those bad stuff from Utopia, both of them really not doing much in the in the fight. I mean, we didn't really see them until late on where we saw Shepanak push around the corner with Biko and die. And Take a lot of damage for it, yeah. Arguably, those bad shots should have had a lot more effect. We kind of neglected them during the fight, but they should have been able to do much, much more in this game. Yeah, I, I really miss them. Especially considering the fact, okay, Utopia lost the first tank, but then the Bacha of Ding had taken a lot of damage already, so you wouldn't expect him to have, as you know, be such a factor. They should have been able to cover off this flank at the very least. Yep, well, let's have a look at the stats and see the damage done on this round. And it's Mertorius coming top in the T57 Heavy, and then Kozoid 3.6 right behind him in the mouse. Shockish in his mouse, uh, 3.6 effectively. Biku then 3k in his Bacha, but. Yeah, the other bat chats of Utopia, not here. Yeah, but Biku got a lot of that damage as well towards the end of the round. I mean, true, true. some in the beginning and most of it towards the end of the round as well. He was clipping out on tanks. In the fight itself, neither of these bat chats actually doing pretty much anything. It was um, Shapanik was other bat chat player as well. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Kreese did more damage than him. Kreese actually, you know, picking up the kill at the end is quite good. Tier 8 tank on tier 10, you know, fantasy points. I don't know if it is weighed for, for vehicle damage. I think it tiers. should be. Yeah, Shepanek there. I feel like his batch should have been able to do a lot more. They didn't, and the result is what it is. It's uh, Ding on match point going into steps. This could be a 5-2 after all. Yeah, Ding have a, a very strong record on steps, so it's going to be very hard for Utopia to break them down. Utopia on steps, pretty rubbish, to be honest, um, compared to what they've played. Let's have a look at the lineups and see the vehicles that both teams are going to be bringing here, Dak, and see if you can spot what they're going to be using tactic-wise. Well, we know what the tactic Utopia is going to be using. It's uh, Kazna crew all over again. Double mouse, double 140, double bacha, 140s for the reset, single shooters, quick reload. They can hit the cap mouses. Uh, Mousgen, Mousgen. <sighs> Mouse, yeah, something like that. Two mouse. Uh, with <laughs> probably one or two of them with optics, so they can spot the cap and ding with one mouse, fire batches on M40. We talked about it last time that RTP's M40 needs to do four, maybe even 5k damage to make this work. So, to break it, well, actually, we'll do it just after. So, let's jump into the round here, Daki. Ding lead uh, Utopia four to two. Are they going to do it? Let's jump into steps. Steps, the most open map in the league. The attacking team appears near the rocks at the bottom of the map, and the defending team starts at the top. Bases are located near the railway and on the green. The best way to control them is to use the lowland near the second base. The attacking team usually begins the attack from the rocks and the railway, but sometimes they can attack through the green. Teams often drag vehicles from flank to flank, so both teams usually pick light vehicles with a good camouflage rating, but sometimes use tanks with a strong turret and even even SPGs. Utopia, red side defending, Ding, blue side attacking. Now, what I was just going to say before we jumped into battle, Daki, is Ding have played steps in total 10 times. They have an 80% overall win ratio. They've won at 50% on attack. They've won at 100% on defense. Whereas Utopia have played it 16 times. They only have an overall win ratio of 31% which comes from a 38% attack win and only a 25% defensive win. So they're, they're pretty rocky on defense. But we can forget about most of these stats because it was all post... Pre. Uh, pre. Yeah, not yeah, post... Uh, pre... Pre-patch. Um, Whoa! So I didn't know you could get all the way up there. Yeah, you can. You can even sit on top if you want. But yeah, so far, so good. 
but all these stats are kind of like, you know, you have to take it into account that it was all before the patch was done. Positive has climbed here on the K1 mountain and now really it's going to be on to Meritorious. He's the player this round who needs to make everything happen. He needs to do, in my opinion, four and a half K damage to make this work. Let's see what his first shell is going to do here onto Papa Pavan. 5-3-3, three, three, not bad, considering Papa Fallon started to move as well. He's looking to try and get in that engine deck at the front there, Daki, isn't he? Uh, with M40, you can't really aim for anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just kind of aim in the general direction and hope it hits. But yeah, honestly, for this tactic from Dane to work, they need to do so much damage with this RDPs because we saw it. Papa Pavin did a ton of damage against Kazna crew and it wasn't enough. Now this RDPs needs to make a bolt. His mouse is pretty much low. HP, in my opinion, needs to bring them very, very low. If he can do this, then uh, they can win. But he needs to connect shot after shot after shot, and he needs spots for this. Yep, he needs to bring the HP down, down, down to down. Down, down, down? What? Well, never mind. That was the, that was the song. I'm not even going to try and sing it. You spin me right round, right? <laughs> no, 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 not like a record player, round, 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 round. Mm -hmm. No. Because you know I'd walk 500 miles. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't dare try and, <laughs> try and sing that national anthem. National anthem? There's nothing that triggers me more than people singing at a karaoke and putting on a Scottish accent. Just don't do it, Nicky, don't do it. Just look at Papa Pavern, he's just sitting up here. Keeping the cap spotted. He probably has binos, by the way, that he's not he moving. He just doesn't have that. The, the slope he's on is just perfect. Yeah, he's not moving, which means he probably has binos or oh. he's AFK, but it's probably binos and this should connect. Oh, he's on fire. He got into the engine deck. Wrecked. Papa Powen, Burnie, Burnie, Burnie. That's going to hurt me. And that is fantastic damage there from Mertorius. Daki, just what I was talking about there, because you told me about that. Yeah, when the, the splash, when you splash into the engine, it gets set on fire. Yep. Yeah. That's and why did you tell me about that, Daki? Because that's where Mamma was going to set on fire like, three <laughs> times. Very annoying. Crete's getting splashed there. Reset. Is he going to move or is he going to stay still? He should move because Artie will tell him, it will tell the guys, the guys, I reset it there and the shots are coming very close to him. But this is a good start from Ding. Uh, with six minutes and 22 seconds left, all of it is still on towards the Artie. Uh, I think Rulezic is now going to swap out with Papa Pavin and Rulezic will be the new dedicated mouse spotter. And if Dink can do the damage towards him as well, they will pick up the game. Uh, Meritorious is still the crucial factor here because he needs to bring Rulezic low now. Can he do it? Let's find out in just a few seconds. Breaknex is able to give them the spot from that bush area. Now, is it not? Can Utopia not give... I mean, can they have no idea that that's the bush where Breakneck's in, or do they think you can... There's a lot of angles to spot yeah. from here. Uh, it's very hard to do it. It's really, really hard. Shockish hitting him there. Oh, oh Meritorious. Meri, as long as going to connect. Nice, 601. So Meritorious is doing his job. Okay, he got lucky with the fire, but he is pumping out a heck of a lot of damage right now. Now Ding needs to start the cap again because there is no mouse spotter. I think arguably they should put double cap pressure right here. The mouses are currently not spotting. So they should put two bad shots, in my opinion at least, on the cap and start forcing Utopia to make a move. Because yes, they have a lot of time still available, but I think they need to really just start using what they have and put two tanks on there. If you were Utopia, would you be able to guess where Mertorius is shooting from? Yes. But would I be able to counter him? No. Okay. I was just thinking that's maybe like what could happen from Vilke. It's very unlikely. Blind shots going out here from Colzoid and Dynamo. Breakneck getting tracked. Now he gets shot. I mean, they don't know he's there, but that was nicely done. Rulazek still spotted at the moment. Mary's going to chuck one over in his direction any second now, and we'll see if that connects. Nice from Ding so far. Very nice. Very patient from them. The double cap pressure should come in here very soon. And that's going to be the thing uh, we talked about, at least I hope. So, because yes, they have a lot of time, but uh, you know, four minutes seems longer than it really is on a map like Steps. Because if it comes down to one minute, you need to chase. One minute is not enough. Hooknik should join the cap now, push it 
very low, and then Utopia will be forced to make a reset. Crease just dodged a shell there. You can see the explosions onto the cap circle there as Hognik's now going to block Kareets because all the capture points are with Kareets. Well, I think Shokish is just going to shield the cap, actually. Shokish is driving up there. Rulzek and Papa Pawan coming over to try and get vision here. Any one of them can spot at the moment. Shokish wants to come over. They want to try and beat out the mouse here, actually, try and potentially do a lot of damage. Elian taking a shot there. Breakneck is now spotted from his area, Daki. He's trying to clip out into Shokish and Papa Pawan, but he's not connecting. Looks like he's actually shooting at the objects. He's not, like, shooting towards the mouse there. You can't see any tracers. Wonder what Shokish is going to do now because it seemed like he wants to block on towards the cap. cap. Three man cap has started now, and it is Shokish who's blocked in front of them. He needs to be careful though because the RT can splash behind it. Shokish is spotted. They should know from his positioning that he has RT behind him. Dynamo is now taking damage from Utopia. We're down to 10 seconds on the cap. Shokish gets splashed, but Kareets and Hulknick are actually nowhere near him. It's a bait. It looks like Shokish is protecting them when they're not really. Somebody's going to have to rush in and do a suicide. Three seconds, two seconds. Now Dain can just back off and shoot at the tanks of Utopia as they come in for reset. Very nicely done there by Dain, but he didn't quite go as planned for them. No, it didn't. And Utopia, look at the damage they've taken for this all across the board. This was great stuff from Ding. Bringing the mouses low, forcing Utopia to do stuff they don't want to do with this lineup. Push in and get spotted. Now Ding has doubled the HP. Shokish can just sit on this cap and Kuritz and Hukni can join it at any moment in time. Papa Powen trying to do a peek again in his mouse. So Shokish is now in a bit of a crossfire, so he can't angle real well. Hawknick is going to go aggressive here to the next ridge line. Biku taking damage there on Utopia. Many of the Utopia tanks down low here. Ding still have all seven guns in the game, including their artillery, however, and Shokish actually, Daki's now down on a one shot. And they need to make sure that they close out this game because they're going to lose Shokish. Uh, Kuritz needs to be careful, but I think Elian getting the kill here on Colossoid should seal the deal. Shokish still standing now, 61 health, he's going down, swinging, he's still surviving, still hanging in there for now as Alien pushes up now on Biku. Dynamo takes another bit of damage, Rulzek now takes more damage, he's a one-shot, Dynamo's a one-shot, Hulknik and Alien want to go in for these kills here, they're going to try and focus Biku down quickly first, bring his HP down. Elaine is shooting across into the mouth of Rulizek as well as Positive gets the kill, Breaknet gets the kill. I mean, this kill's all over the place, Daki here. This is done and dusty. Ding are going to take this one 5-2, to two, and it's unfortunate for Utopia, but Ding, they're setting the pace here for the top three spots. Yeah, Ding doing what they're supposed to do and pick up those three vital points to keep them in that top three because they could still stumble out of it if they get bad results, but this is a good start for them. They might even still cap it Positive here. <laughs> Style points. Style points indeed there for positive. Rulizek, only player left for his team, but Ding are going to cap this one out. Rulizek survives the very last minute. Or Alien might get the kill. Oh, just too little, too late, Alien. Just not enough. We did say that it was going to be closed out on steps. I thought 5 3 is 5 2. Good start there from Ding, picking up three vital points. Uh, well played there. I marry a lot of damage, which we need from that M40 yeah. on steps when you play RD. You need to do the damage, especially if there's a mouse strategy from the defending team. You can see here that it is not unbreakable. You could see that they did the damage towards the mouses. They forced them to peek. They forced them to make try and make resets to try and spot the cap to eliminate certain positions on the cap because the mouse with optics with binos spots a certain amount of the cap and then they blind shoot the, the, the position that the mouse can't spot. Now, if the mouse isn't spotting, there's an entire cap in the open yeah. for them. So there was that. And 